The loud and boisterous roar of water gushing out of a dam wall is a sight to behold. A testament of the power of nature to regenerate and replenish. Tukimukosi, Zimbabwe's largest inland dam spilled for the first time on the 24th of January 2021 since its commissioning in May 2017, heralding a possible boost to food security and stability in the drylands of Masringo. At full capacity, the massive reservoir holds an impressive 1.8 million cubic litres, enough to water the thirsty low vault for three seasons without replenishment. We have so much water. We could easily let this water flow into the Indian Ocean. And two or three years from now, begin to cry from drought. And yet, the role of universities is to strategize on how this huge board of water can be used for the benefit of the people of the country. The prospect of an agricultural green belt across Masingo province is now highly probable as more land can now be opened up for irrigation of cash crops downstream. Mashingo province is a sleeping giant in terms of economic development as it is home to over 50% of the country's inland water resources that include Tugimukosi, Lake Mutiriki, Mushandike, Bangala, Muji and several other water bodies. In Mashingo, we are one of the provinces with a capacity of 50% of the national water uh, percentage. Uh, because of the water bodies we have. So looking into Tokwem Kosi, currently the people are benefiting on socio-economic issues like the community cooperatives where they are doing fishing around Tokwem Kosi and also the boating, people are doing boating around Tokwem Kosi and some uh, irrigation schemes like uh, the Tukwani Ngundu irrigation scheme, Chisase irrigation scheme, and uh, also the expansion of uh, uh, sugarcane production is uh, coming on board of the Kilimanjaro, where we are going to develop 3,000 hectares, about 4,000 hectares to add to, to sugarcane production. There are many opportunities in regards to the overall of the water bodies we have, like the generation of the hydroelectric power in Mutilikwe, Lake Mutilikwe, we can generate electricity in Manyuchi Dam, we can also generate electricity and also Tokwe Mkosi, which can generate about 17 megawatts, which is enough electricity to irrigate most of the irrigation areas in Mashingo. So, with the utilization of land and the water bodies we have, our province is going to benefit immensely uh, towards the achievement of uh, Vision 2030. Huge trades of arable land, however, remains underutilized due to the general lack of infrastructure. A change of fortunes for the province is premised on the full utilization and maximization of land and water resources to achieve economic and social turnaround. We view Mashingo as a sleeping giant in terms of uh, economic development. So the thrust of the new dispensation is to fully utilize those uh, developed uh, water resources in the province so as to contribute significantly to the provincial uh, GDP and subsequently contributing to the national uh, GDP. This current rain season, we have been uh, very fortunate as a country, as a province. Most of our uh, water bodies are spilling, and this is a good indication in terms of um, water security. We have then to move from just 
having that water stored in the dams to fully utilizing that resource. For example, Tukimukosi um, can actually irrigate the, the potential of irrigating up to 40,000 hectares. 40,000 hectares. So it, it is the intention of uh, the government to see to it that we realize that target. The other uh, dams like uh, Muji, they are because of uh, Tugimkosi spilling, the Muji water is now also available for upstream water users to utilize that for irrigation. A case in point is the Chokwane Ngundu irrigation scheme, which for 18 years has been operating at drastically reduced capacity and is now set for revival following the improved water supply in the region. Chokwane Ngundu irrigation scheme, which is 120 hectares in extent, but only 50 hectares are currently in use. So the coming in of Togem Kosa, I think, will see us uh, increasing the hectare to around uh, 250 because uh, within that area we have also 150 hectares which are currently not being used. Tapu wa bura kudaro, kaka ita nyeo kuti, tuku mkosi rakanga risa tirawako. Mureya tanga tichishandi sa yes from 2003, yae baku mushitema, mashaba. Saka mbura indio ya ita ishandi sa wesu imwe chika mchayo, Imagine a Nukuti kunyango kurukuti mwasi sina murume. Ano basirika shakanyanya na utano kwa nsa kujiri mira. Beu za trikuri mamuskimu. Ati kwa nsa kuendi sawa na kuchikoro. Shisina kutu nungo demba wati dae baba wari ipo. Uwe gaono kwa nsa kuwa na maripu kwa muhiri keshe. Shende sawa na kuchikoro. Shirara misawa na muri yako. Local universities are now engaged in developmental initiatives under the Education 5.0 paradigm and have stepped in to assist local authorities through knowledge and skills development in an effort to turn around the drylands of Masungo province into a lush and highly productive green belt. We now understand from the vision of 5.0 that the role of education is to ensure that we empower our students and our people to become creative, innovative, and development-oriented. Now, Great Zimbabwe University is in the group of universities that have been uh, requested by government, that is University of Zimbabwe, uh, uh, Midland State University, and, 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 and NAST, to come up with a vision, a plan, which shows how we are going to take advantage of the dams around us. I'm challenging universities to start playing a different role from what, from the role that they used to play prior to the 5.0 concept. That's the role of universities, is to drive development and make sure that our people uh, uh, save uh, the population. Well, the development of irrigation infrastructure will guarantee water supply in the low vault, leading to intensive production of citrus, traditional grains, and sugarcane. The fact that we have got plenty of water in this region it means that there is potential for irrigated agriculture. Once we invest in irrigation infrastructure, we are going to transform the agricultural landscape. The activities that are happening in this region, they are going to turn into intensive 
agriculture activities. We are talking of citrus plantations, sugar cane, we are talking of fish farming, we are talking of establishment of pastures for our livestock. Our school, together with other research and extension units or support um, institutions in the region, will play a role in training farmers, like giving advisory services to our farmers, as well as developing technologies that would make sure that we increase farm productivity. The establishment of the Center of Excellence for Dryland Agriculture is said to be a game changer in Chibi District. The establishment of the Innovation Center for Drylands Agriculture will play a role in making sure that the university supports cereal production or production of traditional grains in the region so that our agriculture becomes sustainable and the center will also play a significant role in making sure that the green belt becomes a reality. Great Zimbabwe University has played an active role in enhancing sugarcane production in the low belt. Since August 2016, the Gary Magadzir School of Agriculture coordinated a sustainable and acceptable training program for farmers offering a certificate and a diploma in sugarcane agriculture as well as a degree program in plant science. This is a sugarcane agriculture, sugarcane production kind of, kind of training. So Chiredzi would provide with what we call these days living laboratories. You don't need a building, you need living laboratories. They say when you talk about sugarcane, you then have to uh, to go and see the cane itself so that they would appreciate what you're talking about. So we, we, we made our certificate, they completed the first class of 75 farmers, examined and they did very well. And I must mention that the certificate in sugarcane agriculture was a 50-50 practical and then 50 uh, theory. So we, 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 was we, the approach was that we were not training farmers to go and look for employment. No. After the certificate training, in 2016, the results improved a bit to about 68, 68 tons per hectare from 62. Then we moved on after the certificate. The farmer said, ah, but we, we, we are now enjoying. Why can't you then craft something which is a bit higher? Then that's when we crafted the diploma in sugar and agriculture. So it followed the same route. We had to, to consult a lot of other investors, Louisiana invest in America. These are the guys who are doing sugar cane. We had to consult a lot to say, come up with something that is acceptable internationally. So we, we so they enjoyed the science because they were seeing what was the, what they were seeing the impact of that science on the on their yield. So they're getting more money, you know. And the, 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 because they were now using the farm account system, the uh, the, the, the commercial law. So that they would understand the issues to do with the statutory instruments, statutory obligations, like payment money to, to Zino, Zimra, and all other things, so that the farmer would become a commercial person. So we raised their bar to that level. They said, we want to do a degree. And then we said, ah, but if you want to do a degree now, because you've done sugarcane production at a certificate level, you've done that at diploma. Now, we want you to do a Bachelor of Science degree in crop science, so that you also bring in other crops. And you know, in, in sugarcane production, there are other crops which would come in when they are doing rotations, like your soya beans. So they would want also to learn more about the soya beans. So we are saying as a school, when we are teaching the sugarcane guys in Chile, the Bachelor of Science degree in soil science, we touch at those crops which we think are relevant to them. We are not teaching them like what we are teaching students here, because they are not going to look for employment. Sugarcane farmers in the low world are now harvesting higher yields of the cash crop after receiving technical and scientific knowledge from agricultural experts. Uh, I started uh, training with GZU, Great Zimbabwe University, uh, at a certificate level, where I was doing sugarcane agriculture, and then I pursued a diploma in sugarcane agriculture. And right now, I'm doing a degree in soil and plant sciences. The program has helped me in many ways. I now know the signs of farming. 
I can apply science to agriculture. Before this program, we used to just farm without the knowledge of how much fertilizer to apply, which type to apply. If you don't apply fertilizer, what is going to happen to your product and to your business? And right now, I have the business concept of agriculture. I can calculate my output versus my inputs and see if I'm making any profit at all. So GZ2 has helped us in many ways. For Chibi District, the improvement in the supply of potable water is clear evidence of the benefit that the province is getting from devolution funds earmarked for development. devolution funds. My irrigation is a scheme. I am a business center. 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 I am a business Production of small ruminants such as goats is set to grow with the abundant water supply which will expand farmers' capacity. We are at the Pagufura, Panguana, no Zima browsers. Sakakanga only meet in a Uspa, Zinongo Fura words in a basin supplement. We are can only go to one each cafe supplement feed to Nongo Pau, got me. Establishment of a green belt has the potential to spur rapid industrialization and the creation of a rural middle class in areas that were otherwise thought of as underdeveloped and impoverished. I'm so excited by this initiative by the university. I really uh, look forward to some of the innovations that are going to come through there, especially with respect of utilizing land which is otherwise underutilized for the purposes of, of initially growing this sugarcane and, and pulling in uh, smallholder farmers who do have actually access to uh, an abundance of land except that they're disconnected from uh, the industry and from uh, water and technical support services. A sustainable and inclusive industrialization of society starts with uh, the idea of uh, figuring out how to mass produce uh, using many, many small farms aggregated. Uh, so massification of production leading into the mass processing by many uh, uh, of the small uh, 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 farmers uh, giving up some of their labor into the processing uh, uh, aspects of the industry, and then mass consuming a diversity of products uh, locally. So I, I'm, I'm thinking whatever interventions there is really stimulating a new rural middle class that we have not had. Zimbabwe's drive for innovation and industrialization through implementation of Education 5.0 will lead to the establishment of the proposed multidisciplinary research institute for state universities at the Tugimukosi Dam. And that institute is going to be carrying out cutting-edge research, uh, which will be actually the output should be contributing to the uh, to improving livelihoods in the communities. We are carrying out activities like in value addition, and we find that uh, there will be products like fish and other things coming out from the the, 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 the dam where we will be highly involved in the value addition of those products so that also we can even do research to help uh, the communities uh, to find solution to some of the problems that we 
we might be encountering. All activities that are going to be proposed in the master plan, if adopted, what it means is they are aimed actually to benefit uh, the local communities and uh, as well as uh, the province but uh, and the nation as a whole. The, oh, most of these activities are in line with the, the national development strategy, such that we can achieve the goal of uh, taking the country to being a middle uh, income economy by 2030. Mashingo Rural District Council is planning the establishment of a smart city on the fringes of Tugimokosi as a futuristic investment opportunity. On the Mashingo side, you, you know there will be a number of people and activities. So we want those activities to be controlled. And uh, so it is our wish and ambition that we have a smart city uh, on the side of Mashingo. Uh, to the extent that it may be as uh, good as uh, uh, Victoria Falls City, that's uh, what, I, what, what we think. And uh, this smart city, I think, will also cater for the people that will be uh, working within the dam environment. We also have uh, a proposal that within that dam, if an aerodrome could be put, I think that will also assist in a big way uh, to, to link within uh, the buffer range, Mashingo City and also the world at large. I think most visitors uh, nowadays uh, they would want to charter planes. The harnessing of the abandoned water from the Tugimukosi Dam is a priority for the Chiretsu Rural District Council as this is set to revive several projects that have been lying idle. We are working flat out with our communities, trying to mobilize them. We know that they, they also do not have much, uh, in most cases, especially for the rural communities that we work with as Chiretsu at DC. But we still believe that if they bring their resources together, and then uh, look for, for partners, it will be possible for them to benefit. We are privileged to, to be informed that uh, the African Development Bank is actually ready with funding for such big projects. Now we are looking for people who can form consortiums together with our communities so that uh, there will be development. There are many areas uh, besides just agriculture. There is agriculture, yes, where we would promote irrigation, uh, and the revamping of all education schemes that have been operating at uh, below um, sustainability where you would, you would say people can survive on such schemes. Ngondo Service Centre, a busy but underdeveloped settlement along the Masingo Bed Bridge Highway, has the potential to transform into a modern business centre due to its close proximity to the two Gimukosi Dam. Agriculture has uh, profound implications on spatial development or spatial economics. Uh, the agricultural sector does not operate in a vacuum. It has to be supported by other land use developments. We can talk of uh, agro-based industry that will have implications on local economic development. That is transforming the livelihoods of people who are settled within the Green Belt. We also need commercial developments. We also need residential developments to provide goods and services for people who are settled within the Green Belt. The developments at Tugwe Mukosi has implications on urban development, especially within this Mundu Rural Service Center, which is in close proximity to the dam. So it's actually within the catchment area of the dam. The dam will provide um, livelihoods. It will act as an economic base where people will uh, get their source of livelihoods. And urban development uh, becomes paramount. Following the heavy rains experience in the 2020-2021 season, the outlook for agricultural productivity looks promising. However, the heavy runoff has exposed poor catchment management practices and the upper reaches of the Tokwe River, the main supply for the Tugimokosi Dam. For us is the Tokwe River, uh, which actually supplies water into our dam, the Tugimokosi Dam. Um, when you look at uh, the, 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 the color of the water, you can see that the, this water is very turbid. Uh, so what we are saying is 
there must be some activities occurring uh, upstream of uh, the river, uh, which we can say in terms of management of the catchment uh, is something not really good that's happening up there, because what we want is to protect our dam in terms of its capacity, uh, the, the design capacity of the dam, because if you allow a lot of siltation to accumulate within the dam, eventually we may lose our dam. Um, so what you are saying is we need to look, uh, as the university, Grace Mawa University, we need to look at the activities occurring in the upstream or in the catchment area of uh, uh, Tokwe uh, River, that is the Tokwe uh, sub-catchment, and see those activities happening and maybe try to help the communities or enlighten them uh, as to uh, uh, the dangers of uh, maybe uh, failure to properly manage uh, the catchment. The sheer size and scale of the water and land resources in Mashingo province provide the backdrop for growth opportunities across competing uses in agriculture, mining, industrial, municipal and domestic functions. The transformation of Mashingo's drylands into a lucrative green belt is at the heart of development and this can only be achieved through maximization of the abundant human and natural resources. I want to assure the nation that Great Zimbabwe University is on a relentless march towards transforming the nation. We have to play this critical role, otherwise we will have no relevance at all. Why do universities exist? They exist in order to uh, transform uh, the nation, in order to turn knowledge and skills into goods and services. The knowledge that we produce, the knowledge that we share, must be usable and must be used by the people in making a change. As, as we complete this project, we are already uh, starting another project at Chile, Campus for Agriculture. I want to assure you that Great Zimbabwe University uh, is playing its role and will continue to play its role in transforming uh, the economy of this country uh, so that by the year 2030 we will have turned the country into a middle income economy.